Hi there Sugar Snaps, welcome into the studio and welcome to my channel, my name is Brittany. Today I have a block printing tutorial for you. I have a number of blank journals that I'm going to be block printing with some designs that I've previously carved and I'm preparing these for our market and decided to jump on here and share the tutorial with you as I'm working. So to get started you're going to want something to print. I'm using these blank journals because they have a nice smooth cover and they'll take the ink and the print well. I also have a number of different block designs that I've already carved. If you want a block carving tutorial, check out my block printing playlist. You can find it up here and in the description below and I'll put it here on the bottom of the screen, the link to it. Um, learn how to carve from a rubber. This is a stiffer rubber block material and this is a softer, more malleable block material. This one, the softer one being easier to carve, the harder one getting you crisper, more detailed design lines. So I talk about that in some of my other videos and my block carving tutorial specific video. So check those out if you want help on how to block how to carve your block. I also have tools and material resources in the description below. I have a page on my website with all of the resources I use for block printing. So I'll put that down on the screen here below if you want to follow that link and find all of the tools and materials and resources I'm using today. You're also going to want a speedball brayer. This is a rubber brayer. It works well with oil-based inks or inks that have a bit of a tackiness to them because it will stick to the brayer and to your palette and will just make it easier to um, to roll with. If you're working with acrylic paints or other uh, less more watery paints, less sticky paints, you'll want to use a foam roller because the foam will suck up the moisture and it will roll where the rubber brayer will just slide without rolling on your palette. I'm using block printing ink. This is a water-based ink. You can also use oil-based inks. Oil-based inks are harder to clean, so when I'm doing a quick process like this, I like to use water-based inks because they're easy to clean up with water. You can check out this video here on how to clean your tools and materials after block printing if you're using oil or water-based inks. I also have this paint palette, which is a piece of glass I took out of a picture frame and lined with duct tape so that I can put my ink. The glass has a nice smooth surface so the ink spreads smoothly. It applies to the brayer smoothly and therefore applies to the block print and your printed object nice and smoothly and evenly. For your work surface, you'll want something soft. I have a quilt batting here on my work surface with a piece of scrap paper. I just get a roll of crafter's paper and lay that out on my work surface to catch any of the inks. If you do get it on your work table, it can be challenging to get off. You also might want to have paper towels nearby. They are really handy for wiping your hands off between prints. You will get ink on your hands most likely, so just be aware of that. I like to wear an artist apron or smock or something to protect my clothes and so I can wash my fingers on them if I need to. Um, in the instance that I don't have paper towels handy. That is the tools and materials, so let's dive into this tutorial. First of all, you're going to set up your work surface, so lay down your quilt batting or a piece of fabric or even a towel, something that lays fairly smoothly that you don't want any bumps or lumps because it will impact your print, and then put a piece of paper on top of that. If you're doing something smaller, you can lay a piece of paper down on your work surface to protect it, and then a piece of felt on top of that with another piece of paper on top of the felt to protect the felt so you can reuse it and then you'll put your object that you're going to be printing and the soft surface just allows a little bit of a squish so that the print you put your block print on top of your item you can press it into the surface and it will transfer nice and smoothly and opaquely there won't be any areas where there's bumps or lumps showing through the design so I am going to start out by putting some of this ink on my palette. And again, I'm using water-based ink or water-soluble ink. So I'm going to spread out a smooth line here and I'm doing a stack of journals. If you're doing one, you won't need a ton of ink, but I'm doing all of these. So I'm going to use a nice line of ink on my palette and then spread that out. And I can always add more. If you add too much, you're, you don't, you don't want to waste ink. So don't add too much right away. 
pot. And you don't want to add so much that it causes your ink palette to be too sticky. So we want to spread out, you can see the textured lines in the ink right now. We want to spread that out to try to get it to be nice and smooth. Doing a test print of each of your blocks before you do it on the object that you actually want to print is a great way to prime your block and make sure the ink starts to apply and the surface is ready for a nice crisp print. And if you see that there's some ink missing in areas of your print, that might be caused by the way you carved the block. If there's some surface of the block that got removed accidentally, or if the ink just didn't apply well to those areas. So I'm going to start with this dogwood flower on this little guy here. And I'm actually going to grab a separate piece of scrap paper to use as my ink applying paper set this here and now to apply the ink make sure your surface is clean just had some dust particles on there and then take your roller and in one direction we're going to roll the ink across the block and go in one direction and then change directions with your roller until you have a nice layer of ink coating the surface and now this design I have I have a two-part the flower and then this leaf tucks in here so in order to decide the orientation i can set this here and like that remember it will be a mirror image so i'll set this down gently and you don't want to move it once it's set because you'll smear the image so then i'm going to take another piece of paper place it on top of that design and use my brayer to rub the design against the book book that I have here and set that like so. I can also take a heavy book like this guy and set it on top and press down on the book. This will get a nice even pressure without potentially moving the design around. So I'll move this guy and then grab one corner and in a fluid motion, you're going to lift up the block print right off your surface. So lift it right off. And there is our print. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing with the leaf. Apply my ink. Set it where I want it, which I believe is right here. And because this one is so small, I'm just going to use my fingers to apply it. And then I'll lift this up like so. And there is my first block printed notebook. Now allow this to dry for 24 hours, for 24 to 48. I would go for 24 and then just kind of tap it lightly with your finger. If there's still areas that are damp where the ink is coming off in your finger, allow it to continue to dry until that doesn't happen anymore. With the water-based inks, this will be a lot quicker. If you're using an oil-based ink, you're going to want to let it dry for about a week or more because the oil-based ink, it just takes a lot longer to dry. So now I'm going to set this aside somewhere safe where it's not going to get messed with to dry. This notebook will be a little bit interesting because the texture is kind of waffled. There's definitely a texture to this paper and it's going to impact the block in a in or the print in a certain way where the lower areas of the texture won't pick up as much ink as the higher area so it might be a little bit modeled but we'll see how this turns out i'm going to do another one of this fern design so I'll place it here in the middle Set it down gently, hold that in place, put a piece of paper on top, and then my heavy book on top of that. I'm finding I like the book pressure better than using the brayer on these notebooks because the surface of at least the smoother ones is a little bit slippery. And so when I was doing it by hand with a brayer, the block was shifting a little bit. Using the book means that the pressure is a lot more even because the weight of the book is holding the block in place. Okay, let's see how this turned out. Oh, nice, that worked really well. The ink fit into the 
crevices because the ink was nice and thick. So it applied into all the layers. Okay, for this notebook, I'm going to switch designs and I'm going to use this square kind of tile design block. Rub it off a bit to get off the dust. You can also wipe your blocks off with a wet paper towel or more effectively would be a wet washcloth and then let them dry before you use them just to ensure that all the dust is removed and any oils are wiped off. check the reason I like using glass for this is I can hold it up to light and if I can see light coming through the ink I know that it's starting to go thin and isn't going to apply to the block as nicely so I'll add a little bit more ink when that happens if you're using an acrylic palette usually those come kind of transparent so you can do the same trick to see how the ink level is doing I printed all of my journals, they're laying out to dry, and my next step is to clean up my area. So if you are following along with this tutorial, you can check out this video. I'll put it on the screen here as well in the, as in the description below, on uh, a video on how to clean your blocks, your block palette and your roller, anything that gets ink on it, whether it's a water-based or an oil-based ink, I go over how to finish up your process or clean up your space once you've done your block printing in that video. So check that out for more information on that. Thanks so much for joining this tutorial. I hope you had fun doing your project along with me or are inspired to do a project with block printing. Check the description below for more block printing videos on my channel, my playlist, and on my website as well, textileindie.com. I have other block printing resources, posts and other things there. So be sure to check that out as well. Thanks again for watching and supporting my channel. I love having you here and I enjoy sharing these crafts that I love. I will see you in my next video. See you next time and happy block printing.